Susanna Schofel here on Solar Powered Sun Radio backstage at ACL Fest, and I am so excited to have our hometown hero. I know that's a dorky saying, but it really is true when it comes to Adrian Quesada. Thank you, Adrian, for stopping by. Hi, Susanna. Good to see you. It's great to see you. Um, we just met. We, we have, we've never known each other. So, uh, But anyway, you just played an incredible show with a beautiful collection of artists uh, celebrating the new album that you have, mm -hmm. Boleros Psicodélicos. And it's a collection of... Uh, if, if, you, if, you guys turned, if you guys tuned in to our August Artist in Residence program, then you're probably really familiar with Adrian's album and the music that influenced it. But if you didn't, um, it's based on balada music, balada romantica, am I saying that right? Yes. Is it like, okay. Yes, exactly. It. Which is beautiful. Yeah. I love the way you described it on stage just now. What did you say? <laughs> it's like if you're at the bar. Somebody just broke up with you. Yeah. Yes, someone just broke up with you and someone slipped something kind of trippy into <laughs> your drink. This is what this music sounds like. And that's a very accurate description. So um, so is this, this has been, from what I've read, it's been stewing in your brain for a while. Like how long did it take you to kind of like piece this together why did this moment feel right to you i guess to put this collection of songs together uh, a lot of it was a combination of things uh then i think one of the biggest things was honestly it's kind of a pandemic record like my mm -hmm. touring's everything like everybody's you know my schedule was no different yep. than anybody's in that my calendar just went blank and then for right. two months and then for three months and then six and then i was like oh i don't have a calendar for like a year and a half <laughs> So I was like, all right. this stuff I've always wanted to do. But there was also a timing thing. Like, you know, like I said earlier with uh, on stage when I brought Natalia out, like I, I've been obsessed with some of this music for almost 20 years. And then like I would 15, 13 years ago, I was telling people and they would kind of laugh because it's kind of sometimes it can be a little over the top, the music. And uh, people would kind like literally laugh at me. And, and I told Natalia and she's like, you're crazy. Let's record the song. Let's do it. So we started this like 10 years ago. Natalia and I recorded a song. It was also really hard to find the music back then. I would have to buy, um, it wasn't even, you know, um, wasn't at Waterloo Records, wasn't anything. I mean, I'd, I'd have to go to like mom and pop shops and it was all like these greatest hit CD compilations. It was really hard to dig for the stuff. Right. Unless you like really went and found some vinyl. Uh, and I think over the last like five or six years, uh, all of a sudden, so, and I used to like stream the stuff on YouTube. So people would put on YouTube, uh, people would put like random songs. All of a sudden, the stuff started creeping up on like uh, streaming services, and all of a sudden, my mm. collection got huge. And then right. again, timing. All of a sudden, the music was more accessible, and then I had time. I was like, "Let me do it now while I have this window." Yeah. So yeah, that was right on. Mm -hmm. Well, and you have so many beautiful voices on the album from all over. I mean, you've got like Ile from Puerto Rico. Um, you have artists from Mexico City. Did you? I'm so curious with the with the collaboration process. Did you have specific songs in mind for their voices, or did you just kind of send out like, hey, to all these like lovely singers that you've met over the years? Did you say, hey, like pick a song? How? What was the process like in doing that? It was a combination of both. There was a few singers that I knew exactly what I wanted them yeah. to do. Natalia was one of them. The singer named Gabby Moreno from Guatemala was one Gabby. of them. She's great. Tita, who sang El Muchacho de los Ojos Tristes, who just walked by, is her little sister. Um, and uh, oh, no so way. That's I, awesome. some of that happened. Like I knew I wanted Gabby on this one song. She couldn't be here today because she's on tour. Right. But I knew I just was like, she has to do this song. I sent her that one. And then I was telling her about the project and some of the other covers. And she's like, well, that one song, El Muchacho, my sister actually already knows that song. So like it just slipped her Perfect. sister and she sang it. A lot of the other singers, I would send them this folder I had of like 10 ideas, five. I, I would like hand pick five and just send them. And so it was a right combination on. of things. Yeah. The list was not super long because it's such a specific style of singing. Right. You know, right. So it was like a pretty short list of people. Yeah. Well, I think it's really cool the way you take some, you're like an ethnomusicologist. Like you find these like beautiful like songs that like you said, you kind of had to excavate them off records, but you put like this kind of, new feel that's nostalgic but it has like your it definitely has like something new to it like a new a new sound does it i'm so curious when you're like creating the songs like are you trying to stick more to like the origin of the sound and song or are you trying to make it like completely new like how do you shape that you know so th this album started with because it was a pandemic thing and i had all the time in the world yeah I started by recording a bunch of covers and I would dissect them. Like I, I had this playlist that was just getting huge on Spotify of like inspiration. And I would for like two weeks, just all day, dissect these songs and re-record them myself. Like I just really dug in and was like, what's happening here? And started finding like what it was I liked about them. So I recorded a bunch of the covers like that. Like I would just play everything 
take it apart, put it back together. And then at some point, um, I was like, well, I need to do original, my own take on this. So I stopped listening to my playlist and I just kept writing. And like, you know, it was already in me to, to have that. And from years of listening to that. And honestly, like growing up around, not necessarily this style of that kind of psychedelic take on it, but like classic boleros, yeah, like right. I just, that stuff I just right. grew up hearing. It's in your blood, yeah. So yeah. Uh, I just started writing music on my own um, that was, you know, it had already been seeped in. So it was kind right of like the album's a combination of like me dissecting things and also like doing my own take on yeah, it. Yeah, right. Well, and I saw like, uh, because I follow you on Instagram, I saw you post some fun videos of you like practicing like piano and like keys. Like you kind of like started digging into different, you know, I think we all know you as a guitarist, but it's kind of cool. Like was that like sort of an intentional thing or was that because of this music you wanted to kind of like dissect what the key parts are were in them? Uh, a little bit of both, yeah. just pandemic. I had yeah. time. I remember yeah. like the second month I was like, Oh, I just, I have all this time to yeah. do all this stuff. I mean, everybody did, and I I remember uh, hitting Steve Bidwell up, our you know drummer from Pumas, and was just like, let's do some Zoom drum lessons. So I just did like, I was a terrible student. He was like, you took one drum lesson. I was like, we did two. <laughs> I did two drum lessons. But like, I started to like watch YouTube videos and just. I had time to do things like that, but right, it's a combination right. of both, yeah. That's cool. Well, we know you from like so many amazing projects. I mean, Grupo Fantasma, Brownout, Black Pumas. What do you prefer? Do you have a preference as far as like kind of like stepping into a musician in the band versus more of like the band leader role or like the, the a songwriter or an arranger, producer? Do you have like one role amidst all that that you enjoy the most or is it just everything? I like... I like, uh, I mean, I feel like music director and producer are almost like hand in hand in that, like music director is just that same approach to the live setting, you know, it's just right. like really doing that, what a producer does in the studio, sort of, ish, yeah. Yeah. ish, I, that's kind of my favorite role, but I have really, Puma's really gave me a renewed uh, appreciation for playing the guitar, like really yeah. just playing guitar was something that I was starting to be like, do I, you know, do I want to play piano? And, and I'm back to just like, I love being a guitarist. I, I do not love having to have a microphone and talk to people. Right. That's right, the only right, thing that right. I'm like, you know, but there was some, <laughs> there was some like out of necessity, I had to sort of explain to people what was going yeah. on today, but like. No, I'm you glad know. you did that actually, yeah. because I, I was watching, I was like, I want to hear, I can't remember what her name is. I want to hear it. So I'm glad you went and like you introduced like everybody. I asked everybody again. they wanted to be introduced and some people said yes and some people yeah. were like, no, we'll, we'll do it. But I'm like, but yeah, but you guys came all the way over here. Like they should know your name. Right, right, right. Yeah. You should have like a, a side man, like like a hype man kind <laughs> yeah, of being like, exactly. and now put your hands together yeah, yeah, for yeah. So you don't have to do that. Totally. So. <laughs> you want to do it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll do I'll be your hype man. Um, well, and you have your ACL taping tomorrow. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. Very exciting. Uh, is Are there any plans to take this particular project like anywhere else? Or is it just, I mean, I, it's got to be complicated because you have so many singers to, to you know, hone in on. But like, is, are there any future plans with this particular project? Um, not for, not like touring per se, you know, yeah. but, but one-off shows for yeah. sure. And I think this was the biggest hurdle, like the biggest we've never... I haven't met some of these people and yeah. uh, we have, we've never played, we've never. So this week was extremely stressful and crazy to try to get it together. I can imagine. But after this weekend, I feel like that's the biggest hurdle. And now yep. it would just be like a matter of rehearsing and fine tuning. Yeah. There is talk of doing it here and there, you cool. know, like a few, a few big kind of markets or right big on. opportunities, but not, um, not a touring thing. Yeah. I, yeah it's, it's a little, it's, that's it's a logistical nightmare. That's yeah. a headache. Yeah. But I, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow because I feel like this music also like is, is like perfect for like a theater setting. Like I want to hear mm -hmm. every little, you have so much beautiful, um, like a sonic soundscape going on, like the vibraphones and, and the, you know, you've got like the strings and you've got the, the horns. So there's a lot going on. I'm really excited to kind of like getting to hear like more intimate version of it tomorrow night. Thank but y'all killed it today. So thank you, thank yeah, you. yeah. So I cheers. Too, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for stopping by Adrian Quesada of all of the things, but today and this weekend, Bolero Psicodélicos, his own thing, rocking with a lot of beautiful voices. Check it out. Also, I want to say that if you, like, if you start listening to the album on whatever streaming platform you listen to, it will automatically bring up the most beautiful music oh, from wow. like, you're kind of like, it's, it's, it's a great jumping off point, your record, if people want to dive more into like Latin American sounds. I was listening to it last night while I was like baking and I was like, Oh, who's this band? And I was like, I was, I started to like flag like different artists. So it's one of those like the algorithm starts like. Feeding I know. You I'm stuff, still so. finding stuff. Like I'm yeah. still like daily at and and if you uh, 
want to get i think you can just i think the playlist comes up as a public playlist the, the playlist that i use as inspiration oh, yeah. should come up on spotify like just look up a little sequel it Bolero might be Cicolos. there and yeah. it's got like 70 songs yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome oh, God, yeah. right on well there you go there's your your beautiful musical research yeah, for the weekend yeah. so awesome thank you so much for joining thank us and thank you for tuning in to solar powered sun radio Susanna Schofel with adrian quesada